What do we have here? My 1960 Chevy Corvair. I like it. Would you like to hear the horn? Let's hear the horn. <laughs> That's not stock, is it? <laughs> no. I thought it was really unique in its own way, so I had to have it. I think it's in pretty good condition. A lot of Corvairs are just rust buckets. I need to sell it just because I need some money for school. I'm hoping to get about 10000 The least I'll take is about 6000 This is the 1960? Mm hmm It was the first model year. In 1960, if you were like an 18, 19-year-old kid having this car, you were cool. It was a modern, slick-looking car. This was a really innovative car. I mean, GM completely redesigned the car with this thing. What was so new and innovative about it? Air-cooled motor in the back, rear-engine car, really fuel-efficient. I mean, this thing got, I think it was like 26 miles to the gallon. They were trying to go a little Volkswagen-ish. Yeah. Basically, in 1960, you had Porsche, Volkswagen, and Corvairs were the only ones with the engine in the back. The Corvair was GM's attempt at a revolutionary new car. They were trying to compete with other cars that were gaining popularity, like the Volkswagen. They came up with a radical new design that took chances and turned heads. Let me show you the inside. OK. This was considered a compact car back then. It's a decent-sized little car for a small family. We put the seatbelts in. OK, yeah. Because of this car, a lot of car safety was created. I know a little bit about the slam campaign in 64. Ralph Nader. Ralph Nader, yeah. yeah. Ralph Nader's book, Unsafe at Any Speed, focused on the dangers of driving the Corvair. He testified in front of Congress about it. Now we have safer windshields, seat belts, and energy-absorbing steering wheels. I'll tell you what, there's people who fell in love with this car, and there's people in love with them today. Yeah. I've had a guy follow me for a couple of miles just to ask what year it was, and... Sounds creepy. <laughs> it was a little <laughs> creepy, but people love the car. Can I look at the motor? Yeah. Have a gander under the trunk. There she is. All right, sweet. See how weird that motor is? This right here is called a pancake motor. It's flat as a pancake, and it doesn't have a radiator. It's air-cooled. We have a big fan that blows a lot of air right over the motor, and that's what keeps it cool. Well, I've never seen anything like that. <laughs> it is cool, though. I mean, I really do dig it. What do you want to do with it? I want to sell it. I'm asking 10 grand. 10 grand. But by saying you're asking 10 grand means you'll already take less, right? Uh, not, <laughs> not exactly. Uh, do you mind if we take it for a spin? Sure. OK. You got the keys? Yeah. These cars are definitely collectible. But considering this car is over 50 years old, I got to make sure everything is cool before I even make an offer. Have fun. <laughs> I mean, I liked the car because it was just so different when it came out. I mean, they had to redesign everything to make this car. It's got a rear air-cooled engine, independent suspension. They took some chances making this car. You know, a lot of guys will argue to the death that these things are not dangerous. You just got to know how to drive them right. If you're going to make a car for the general public, then you shouldn't have to drive it right. It should drive like a regular car. <laughs> It is what it is. I mean, guys do collect these. They're worth money. Is it my favorite car? No. I mean, like, look at the slop in the steering. You literally have to try it like this, too. <laughs> uh, it smells like there's an exhaust leak. Uh. So um, this is cool, but I don't know what to think of it, man. Feels like a death trap. This might not be Corey's bag, but there's actually some money here. There's a lot of collectors that love these cars. If she'll come down on the price, I think I can make some money here. Leaky exhaust and all. <laughs> well. Where in the world did you get the number $10,000 on this car? <laughs> well, that's about what I have into it. What does that got to do with the price of tea in China? <laughs> I could buy a convertible that's completely redone for $10,000. Well. You don't really need to spend too much on paint. And when she drives, she only slips out of gear if you're not going fast enough. <laughs> um, That's not a huge selling point. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're asking too much for this car. You got some transmission problems. It's not shifting the way it should shift. It's 
dropping out of gear and doing some weird things. Well, Blue Book and uh, my insurance has it at 8,000. Crash it. <laughs> God, son. <laughs> I, there, there's just, there was no way I'd even go close to that. If you were going to force me to make an offer, you, I'd offer you three grand. I, I couldn't take that. We're way too far apart. Thanks for coming by, though. Thank you. Learn a letter out, Corey? Yeah. Corvairs can be great cars, or they can be like this one. I wanted to fall in love with this thing, but a bad transmission and sloppy steering, I just couldn't make the romance work.